Welcome back everyone, Toysius here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another retro shiz look back at the past, and today we are totally checking out the 1997 Spider-Man, the animated series, The Web Trap Wave by Toy Biz. And this was the start of pretty much the end of Spider-Man, the animated series, really tying in to the toys that Toy Biz would start putting out. The next wave we'll look at is pretty much the finality of all the characters and such that you would see in Spider-Man the Animated Series put forth in a action figure line under the name until they went more towards comic book stuff. And this is really, yeah, the beginning of that because no figure really, despite having a Spider-Man figure coincided with the animated series at all we had scorpion and rhino but new designs more especially scorpion from the comic books we had a future spider-man we had a monster spider-man that wasn't man spider so again being a little kid i only grabbed the scorpion off of this line because that was the only one that really resonated with me but like pure fashion of me going back and looking at all these old toy lines I do regret not getting them, but I'm so glad to have them now because they're actually really, really cool. And one of the best parts, though, is that I had to go back and get the Rhino, of course, and not usually do I get the packaging. So we can totally check it out, look at it overall. Who designed this, by the way? Because Alistair Smythe must have had his hand in this. There's a little bit of a nod to the Spider Slayer, specifically the Tarantula Spider Slayer from the first season of Spider-Man the Animated Series. Shut up. Shares a little design. I see what you're doing there, Alistair Smythe. But it's cool just to go back and see the old packaging types. Again, kind of utilizing, you know, you, it's a rhino. It's rampaging rhino on the backside. Spider-Man uses his webbing to make traps and to capture his enemies. Little, little tidbits, little nods here and there. The artwork is just that Toy Biz amazingness. As always, a little bit of a bio for Rhino and just kind of how it coincides with this wave. You get to see how the web trap works. You get to see all the figures in this wave, which there were five. And keep in note, you know, these are the prototypes, the paint masters. They do vary a little bit differently from what we got. Maybe a little bit brighter colors, less wash. You can even see Rhino here has a little bit more orange yellow to him. And like for Monster Spider, Spider Trap, yeah, we'll take a look at that in just a few. The barcode as well, if you're, for some reason you're in 1997 and want to scan this in store, call the Toy Biz toll-free customer service number to find out what's coming out. And also, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Phil Ramirez. Please check out his Instagram, Ramirez Studios Inc. He actually worked on this old Toy Biz line. In fact, a lot of different Toy Biz figures, in fact. But most specifically, the Monster Spider, Scorpion, and also the Rhino from this wave. So please do check out his work. Amazing guy and just an amazing sculptor. Still doing amazing toys. Stuff that just blows your mind even to this day. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look back at the 1997 Spider-Man, the animated series, The Web Trap Wave. By Toy Biz. And while I got you guys here, I just want to say thanks so much for checking out my YouTube channel. If you've not subscribed already, please do so. Or don't. It's totally up to you. But if you're a huge Spider-Man the Animated Series fan, I guarantee you there's something here for you. So I hope you join. And let's talk about this new wave. So we're going to start things off with the first figure and the only figure that I ended up grabbing as a kid from this wave. The Sinister Scorpion. And if you're not familiar, this Scorpion attire costume comes from around the 90s. A little bit of a redesign here and there from Spider-Man Unlimited. Nice greens, yellows, big huge bendy wire tail. Really stands out. Big biomechanical suit. Very different look for the Scorpion than, let's say, what actually appeared in Spider-Man the Animated Series. But it's actually a really cool design. And me being a little kid, seeing that going, yeah, definitely, whatever, that, I don't, I don't know, get it. Let's, let's add that to the collection. Minimal articulation, of course. He is a bit overly pre-posed in the sense, but back in the day, that really wasn't an issue. But nowadays, yeah, he's just a little bit cumbersome to kind of stand once in a while. The big, huge, bendy wire tail, though. That is where it's at. That is so cool. And this was a figure that showed up many, many times, which we'll talk about in just a second. 
articulation wise his head would rotate back and forth he had some nice rotation in the shoulders arms very cool nothing in the elbows he had single jointed knees nothing in the feet nothing in the waist but you could get him in some good crouch positions the tail really helped him stand gave him that real cool you could kind of pose him on the daily bugle play set you know something like that also this black mark has been on his shoulder since i got the figure i don't know that was a paint mishap i remember that one of my distinct paint mishaps from when I was a little kid. But like I said, this figure was awesome, a must have. And I know I like to have all the accessories and I still have this accessory somewhere. I wasn't able to find it and I wasn't able to get a new one for whatever reason, just a single thing. But it's a big, basic scorpion web net trap. A tail would open up, big net would unfurl and you would capture your enemies. Very cool. Actually a figure in and of itself and when I go back and do a you know, catch up for maybe figures I've missed here and there from past waves or just kind of offsets, I will include a look at this Scorpion figure as well. Next up is the Web Net Trap Spider Man. And like I said, this is really the close association you would say to anything Spider Man the Animated Series, just in it being Spider Man. But it wasn't the typical Spider Man figures we had gotten from previous waves. This one seemed to emulate more towards Todd McFarlane's style, maybe even J. Scott Campbell's style a little bit. I'm going to go more McFarlane, but very cool to see a different type of Spider-Man. And then you're also getting this giant web trap accessory, which does work, but I like the details, the sculpted webbing on him, the sculpted spider symbol, the blues really look good with the reds, and it has a really nice dark wash to really bring forth the webbing on his costume. It's not exactly perfect, but for a figure that was different back in the day, it worked. And he had articulation at the head, at the shoulders, nothing at the elbows, unfortunately. So he was very pre-posed, very outstretched fingertips, very long fingertips. But it works. It's cool. Very Spider-Man. He had single jointed knees. He had some articulation at the feet as well when they had started instituting that. He kicked up nicely. You could get him in some cool Spider-Man poses before they immediately went to the super articulated Marvel Legends that were coming up very shortly. Very nice colors. Nicely done just overall. It was a different Spider-Man. Even though he was pre-posed, he does stand a little bit wonky. He's got a very tiny little waist to him. But from going from a lot of different Spider-Man figures that were reused, redecoed and such, yeah, it was nice to get a new type of sculpt for a Spider-Man. Now with the web trap, this was actually, again, a figure in and of itself. It's huge. And you can see all the details inside it, which we will look at just in hand. But you have four of these web nets basically and you pull the little spider and it would close real fast and if you had an enemy inside or what have you a rhino or a scorpion just happened to traverse inside your web net trap well i'm sure it would stick them in there but what's actually kind of cool is to see all the sculpted little nuances within the webbing itself lots of hidden jokes and such like a bottle of tequila we'll just say <laughs> a book which is interesting spiders webs chains park avenue sign a trash can lid a broom and then one heck of a really nicely sculpted tarantula spider front and back this is a great spider-man now we go from scorpions to spiders to rhinos the rampaging rhino with of course his web foot snare this particular rhino is more comic book based of course and much like all these other ones figure in of himself with the accessory but this rhino was a little bit more close in color to what we would see for the rhino on the animated series, but very nicely done, nicely sculpted, big, bushy eyebrows on this guy. Love the feet, love the toes on this rhino. It just, it just looks cool. He's got all kinds of musculature and biceps and his head rotates, which is really nice. Big horns, big chin, big nose. Arms are on a ball joint at the shoulders. Nothing at the elbows. None of these figures really had elbows going on. But he did have knees. Nothing at the feet in terms of rocker or rotation, anything like that. But it was a nice, solid rhino figure. And he's actually pretty cool. 
I liked all the bumps and such, even though the animated series, they didn't have that on there. But if you look real closely, you can see all the little hatch marks and details that they put in. Painted nicely. I like to see the eyes on the sides of the rhino costume. It just looks like the thick hide skin of a rhino. And I think that Phil Ramirez really pulled that off nicely. As for me and my taste, I'll take the animated series. That's that's what my whole basis of collecting. But you can't discount a really nice looking comic book rhino. And as for his web net trap accessory right here, you'd simply push on this. It would do like a spinny globe action. And this is actually kind of cool. On this end, you kind of lift the door up and it's like tarantula spider would pop out. That's actually pretty cool. It's a nice little touch. Not necessarily needed, but it's kind of fun. That's actually kind of cool, and I like the way it spins open. Much like Spider-Man's trap, little fish bones, rats, pieces of garbage adorn the webbing of this trap. I even like to see little instances of, you know, it's not painted, but the webbing and such. Really nice wash overall. It's just interesting. It looks like a globe, and you're waiting for, like, little spiders to pop out of it or whatever. So... Very cool rhino, nice accessory, nice addition to the web trap wave. And now we come to the future Spider-Man with the cocoon web trap. This figure definitely threw me for a loop when I was a little kid, that's for sure. He does sort of resemble modern comics's, let's say, SPDR robot, just FYI. I noticed that with a lot of old toys, sometimes new designs, figures, here and there, characters... You can see old Toy Biz nuances within them, so that's always nice. The web cocoon, we'll show you in just a second. That's actually a nice little whatever it is. <laughs> but great colors on this. Blues, reds, greens. Really interesting backstory. Rhino and Scorpion got a time machine, went to the future, and who do they meet? Spider-Man, of course. Still battling the forces of evil. Yeah, except I would feel like... The Poor Spider-Man may have had an accident or two. This is where it kind of gets weird. He's gotten like almost full Robocop. I mean, he doesn't even have arms anymore. One arm's got like a whip tendril thing to it. The other one's got some kind of, you know, Cronenberg thing going on. He's got all kinds of tubes and everything. Articulation's actually pretty cool. These are on like a ball pivot joint right here. This is nice. He does have single jointed elbows, but they'll go back and forth. So that's actually... Kind of interesting. I do like that they did that. Very futuristic, right? Same thing with this arm. Nice little lashed out, lashered tongue thingamajig. Spikes and protruding everything. His legs are okay. They kind of only move off to the side because of that joint. He does have knee articulation. Nothing at the feet. The three pegged feet. It just is weird. Where are his feet? How do the feet work? Spider-Man had to have been in some horrible accident. More detail on the front than the back, of course, but it does work with the figure. You see a little bit of Spider-Man webbing, because, of course, you can take the helmet off, and who do you find underneath? Probably Peter Parker, I'm assuming, or maybe he's just a head in a jar at this point, and he puts the battle suit on. I don't know, but a very cool, especially nowadays, with all the Spider-Verse and everything else coming out, this was different. This was unique. And it's just, it's so different and weird, but it's so Toy Biz. Now with this web cocoon, now this is cool, right? This thing, little button on the side, you push it, and it opens up to have this like green alien, I'm assuming future creature coming out of it. And correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like this is something from the comics or 2099 or something like that. Something, I got to do more research on it because it totally reminds me of something I have seen. Now, he is missing a little piece of the base, like a little brown piece of the base that would help him stand up a little bit better. But from future Spider-Man to whatever this alien cocoon thing is, that's just a rockin' figure. Which finally brings us to my favorite figure, and I didn't even know it until a couple years back when I got this guy, the Monster Spider-Man. Not the Man Spider, by the way, from Spider-Man the Animated Series, we already looked at that figure in a previous wave, and no, it's not Spider X, right? It's little, you can see where they kind of drew inspiration from. And even if this is from something specific, I've never seen it, but it is flippin' cool. This is a really awesome, out of the box, creative, creepy Spider Man. Spider Man gets caught in like a nuclear radiation explosion and mutates into this. 
not only has he had the neogenic nightmare, but now he gets to mutate again and find a cure. Man, oh man. This thing, he's got all sort of spider appendages and just the skin, the reds and the blues. The articulation on this thing is killer. I love the face. I love the mandibles, the jaws, the eyes. I love his little teeny tiny Peter Parker hands or the big hands, the Peter Parker hands. And now he's got little human hands. It's weird. It's a total weird look for Spider-Man, but it works. And he's got great articulation on him. The arms, of course, move. I love the big giant hand. I love the big claw hand. That's so cool looking. Again, very Cronenberg in this wave a little bit, right? Just Spider-Man just gets messed up in this entire wave, some way, some form. But little teeny tiny hands move. The legs all move. Nothing at the joints, let's say at the knees, but I love that one of them's a foot. That's all kinds of terrifying right there. The abdomen piece right here, that'll swivel. It's got little pulsating veins and a tip on the end of it and everything else. But the clincher, the ultimate clincher, I should say, is that this Spider-Man on the bottom has a butthole. Yeah, right there. <laughs> that is amazing. When I got this figure years and years and years later, that was, I would turn it over. I go, oh my God, that is hilarious this is a fantastic addition to your spider-man toy biz collection if you don't have it you must get it it's just the greatest thing ever it's the first spider-man figure with a butt hole <laughs> his web trap accessory is interesting it's like a big creepy tarantula almost venomish kind of thing especially on the paint master prototype right Kind of looks carnage right, in some aspects. Little blacks and reds on him. And, of course, they repainted it to be more green-brown. But you see a little button on the bottom right here. You kind of outstretch the arms. And if you had a victim waiting for, you know, all kinds of stuff, kind of looks like an artichoke on the back, too, right? With all those veins and everything else. The eyes are great. The teeth are great. Comes along, push the button, and snap. This thing will snap down on your enemy or hero or what have you. It's just a great accessory. So many big accessories in this wave. It's so refreshing. This was why Toy Biz stuff was so great. They used to pack the box with just so many things, and they were huge. Man, they were killer. Now, to kind of play off, let's say, the Sinister Six. For me, Sinister Six will always be the Insidious Six just because of the animated cartoon. And yeah, you could fit in the Rhino and the Scorpion if you really wanted to, or if you didn't get the past versions, the cartoon accurate versions, but you can see the subtle differences. And like I said, Rhino's, the gray kind of works better with the cartoon, obviously with Scorpion, the more green classic style works better for him. I, I think personally, that's just for me, but you can appreciate the nineties look, the very robotic suit. And the Scorpion figure was released a number of different times and a number of different decos. I was under the impression that I had two of these. It's actually two different paint jobs. So one's a lighter green, and then this third figure is like a more metallic silver sort of green. One also kind of has more lipstick on it. I don't know if you caught that. But then there was like a purple one as well, and I'm pretty sure there's either one or two more colors style variances for this Scorpion figure, which I will be taking a look at in a future video. Now with Rhino, you get to see the more armored up Rhino. You had the more accurate, semi-accurate to the animated series. Both of them are the same figure, but you just added armor to the other one. So this one was a nice change of pace. But again, in looking at these as a kid, I just thought, ah, I have my Rhino. We're good. The Spider-Man figures, just to show you in detail, Moving gradually away from Spider-Man the Animated Series, more of the cartoon look, and going more for that Todd McFarlane comic book look that Marvel Legends would soon delve into. Even this guy, who is basically the same body, but a different sculpted head on him. But just the paintwork, everything about it. This was a very eye-catching Spider-Man. And if you thought this was the first time Spider-Man ever got turned into a monster during the Toy Biz days, well, you are sadly mistaken not only did we got monster spider we also got man spider which is just an awesome figure we also got vampire spider-man because you know we also got lizard spider-man from the arachnophobia wave and we also got lizard spider-man again from the comics but he was in the 12 inch line very cool figure if you don't have this guy he is an awesome sculpted figure spider-man and the hobgoblin yeah they did that one too and then last but not least the doppelganger spider 
which is still one of the best doppelganger figures that has ever been made. So with the monster spider and turning Spider-Man into things, yeah, we've uh, we've definitely been there. So that's really going to wrap it up for my look back at this 1997 Spider-Man the Animated Series, loosely, Web Trap Wave by Toy Biz. Very interesting. To me, I felt it was missing the connection to the Spider-Man the Animated Series, even as a kid. Going only more for the Scorpion, but having these all now, seeing the sculpts, appreciating the designs, the thoughts, the details that went into them, it's a very cool wave. Totally different, and one that would usher in a brand new way to look at Spider-Man figures coming soon from Toy Biz. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man the Animated Series. Did you have this wave? Do you need to get it now? What's your favorite figure out of this line? And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, we are almost at the tail end. Just one more to go and maybe a box set. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Adios.